Ladies, gentlemen, and Herodrum of all ages, Season 3 has arrived for Diablo 4, and the mood is sort of middling. With the release of the season, we had the actual realization of a number of quality of life changes we had only heard about beforehand, so before diving into everything else, let's take a quick look at these changes and how they function actually in-game. First up is Helltide. It happens once per hour, down for five minutes, all well and good, happy to see it. Then we have the promised land of a whole extra stash page. We've been complaining about how restricted the stash is in this game since pretty much release day of the base game preseason, and while they keep promising us long-term fixes to this, we are now at season three. And with the last two seasons, the short-term band-aid has been give us one extra stash page. And well, yes, it does literally speaking help to have an extra one. It also is such a small actual fix to what the larger actual problem is that it just sort of postpones when it becomes an issue for each player by a couple of hours, really. It doesn't add that much. It, it's good intentions, I suppose, but not a strong enough action to actually back it up. Hopefully we actually get the changes to aspects going into the codex and such in season four so that we can stop dealing with these crazy shenanigans. After that, we have the addition of WASD movement to the game. I haven't had the time to try it properly myself with the leveling blitz, but this player has a number Number of hours of messing around with it. Their opinions are essentially that it's really nice in general, great for people who prefer that style of movement in 90% of situations, with their only real complaint being that you still need to both walk over to and click on loot to pick it up, which is of course a bit irritating. The suggestion that they have is adding a button to just pick up whatever is directly below the character or something like that to make it simpler, sort of like how console works more accurately. And I did also include this response to them saying that this is a good bit of constructive criticism that they gave. There was no unnecessary anger, just this is my opinion on a new mechanic. This is what I think can make it better. Simple as that. Then to round it off, our quality of life changes at least, we have the event timers being in the corner of the map now. Extremely simple change, but absolutely welcome, telling you how long you have before a world boss or a legion event without having to find and hover over the symbol to actually see the numbers. And then finally, there's respec mode, which is simply there to let you move your skill points around in your skill tree without committing to it until you're sure that you fully want to change to that actual setup. It works exactly how we thought it would before the patch, and it's nice to have. It's still no build loadout system by any means, but this is definitely a good thing to be around, even in the future where there would be build loadouts. Past that, before that, we dive into the community opinion on the season itself. One last thing of note is a widespread bug currently going on where people get soft locked in the seasonal quest line by being unable to interact with the brazier in the gate hall. If this happens to you, the fix is relatively simple. Just change instances by teleporting or relogging, and it should work when you come back. I know, it's irritating, but at least we have a very easy work around for it in the meantime. Then let's dive into the real meat of the matter here. How do people feel about season three so far? First up, there's the traps. I've had a bit of a mixed reaction to this myself and the community opinion that I've seen seems much less mixed than it is straight up negative. So let's talk about why and my own thoughts on it too. The main feature that makes the vaults different from regular dungeons really is the traps. Playing around the warding buff stacks and not getting hit by traps to get better loot at the end if you're successful. And well, the trap rooms are quite exquisite designed, honestly, with relatively tight paths that you have to stick to to avoid being hit, and in its own way, I think it really is fun as a mechanic in a vacuum, but it's just sort of in the wrong game. Diablo 4 up until this point has been built and build and sold to be essentially the hack and slash of ARPGs. The main difficulty is a statistical wall more than anything else, and if your gear and your build meet the requirements of that wall, you will smash through it. So people look here and they see these traps, and they are the direct antithesis of that concept, really. If a level 60 player and a level 100 player both look at the same trap room, the only advantages that one has of making it to the other end over the other one of them is the experience of being level 100 and maybe seeing the trap room before. Or I suppose class differences, of course, are at play, but the point being, you have to treat the traps with respect, no matter what, and you are asked to do that even from the first moment you enter a vault in the seasonal quest line. It's not something that you can just turn your brain off and forget about, it is active, and a lot of people play this game just for the satisfaction of clearing large screens of monsters just being upset by this buck in the general gameplay loop. On which note, I think this is super valid criticism as well. While the traps are interesting at its base, and a season of traps is definitely a concept that's interesting, there are some inherent issues with the functionality of the way this game works simply not being built for movements these precise that you're asking for with these traps. Even if we count in the fact that they added WASD movement for keyboard and mouse this season, you still have to stand on top of items to pick them up, you still have tons of melee attacks for different classes that literally pull you on top of your target, moving you forward momentum through a room, which normally moving a foot or two around to actually hit an enemy is a really good thing to have, but in the middle of a trap,
trap room can have you instantly lose stacks for doing nothing but trying to hit the enemy directly in front of you. Not to mention while things like Leap on Barbarian and Teleport on Sorcerer are incredible for dealing with traps on PC, with controllers, the imprecise targeting of ranged movement skills makes it just completely unfun entirely to use those. Past the traps in the vault stem, there is also a lot of reasonable criticism being tossed in the direction of our construct companion, the seasonal power-up. I was a bit hesitant when it was first announced, sure, as generally speaking, giving temporary power to a non-player entity is just far less fun to actually play around, far less customizable, and well, the results are about what I expected. The construct itself does have some cool combos that we can give it, and while I've seen plenty of people saying their construct feels inconsequential, I think if you actually build the governing and tuning zone combinations together properly, it really does have a notable power boost for you, especially with the more utility type stones like pulling or protect or even flash of adrenaline for player damage buffed just as a whole. But the real main issue with this as a seasonal mechanic is twofold. First, the ranking up of the stones themselves is not matching the progression speed of player level. I'm nearly level 60, gotten through almost exclusively through interacting with vaults and arcane tremors, just doing the seasonal stuff. So literally the season mechanics and my highest rank stone in general is level three out of 10. And that's only one of them. So I feel like people are hitting a wall where their construct is simply not scaling that well with them. And so they aren't feeling that it's even there anymore, which makes it feel sort of pointless. And the thing is, that's a sort of inherent issue with this style of seasonal power. The big reason that season two felt so fun to so many people is the vampiric powers inherently changed the way that the gameplay felt as a player and had big enough shifts in gameplay involved that it genuinely created new combos of uniques, new combos of legendary aspects that just wouldn't have been used otherwise, even making entire builds worth using that previously weren't, or creating whole new builds because of some of the more integral effects. They were impactful, they had meaning, and most importantly, they made a lasting difference on the gameplay from a player perspective, making the game feel fresh. The Construct Companion, on the other hand, is significantly limited in that regard. It either just has attacks, which it will do on its own, and it will apply damage or different effects depending on what you choose, or it has utility, things like pulling enemies into it, giving you damage buffs on the player or survivability buffs, but nothing it does inherently creates new playstyles or boosts weak ones over strong ones, and even the strongest thing that it does to the player is, again, just giving you pure multiplicative damage that doesn't change the way the game feels, it doesn't change the way the game plays, it doesn't change the strength of different styles of builds over other ones, it's just a flat damage bonus. So it just reinforces the base meta of the game. It's not really a seasonal meta so much as the base meta just extended. It's not fresh, it's not really exciting, and I say that knowing full well that one of the later game unlocks is the tuning stone for plus four to all skills, basically a mini Shaco, but it doesn't really matter because plus four to all skills doesn't make new builds. It doesn't change which builds are the best. It just solidly boosts every single playstyle nearly equally. There are some differences, of course, but nearly equally. And that right there is the heart of why I think the construct is a lackluster seasonal power up. Help, this person nails it on the head. There are realistically some really cool powers that are included within the season. Multi shot, multiplying projectiles is really cool. The ability to make melee attacks physically bigger is awesome. Making arcing attacks hit more enemies than normal. All of these are genuinely interesting concepts that would change the way that players work around builds if they were applied to the player. But on the construct, it's just such a limiting environment of potential combinations. It just sort of is a lot more stale than it could have potentially been. And I think what happens here is they chose to put all these cool things on the construct so that they have a nice, tiny, contained, balancing environment to work within. But as a result of going for the safe play, they've lost the excitement for the players. And it just sort of, as a whole, I guess at this moment, it's just pretty clear that the community seems to agree that season three is just less put together than season two was. And most notably, the way a lot of people are reacting to it, it feels like the people who made season three and its mechanics didn't actually play through stuff enough to find things that players have recognized as problems within literally a couple of hours of the season launch. And compared to season two, where we were all really impressed, it felt like it was really thought through and actually tested, this is really disappointing, and I'm still personally going to get the enjoyment that I can out of the season, of course, until I get bored, but I can already tell instantly that the shelf life on season three is far less than season two, as sad as that is to say, especially this early in. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this news update video then, and of course, leave your own thoughts about season three and all that in the comments down below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye